Well, we have come to a conclusion to the AFC and NFC Championship games. The Denver Broncos prevailed against Tom Brady and the New England Patriots 26-16. They held on. Peyton Manning was the master and was able to defeat the Pats. And in the NFC uh, Championship game, the Seattle Seahawks were able to beat the San Francisco 49ers in a defensive showdown. Big plays by both teams. The Seahawks came out the victors, and they will head to the Super Bowl where it will be played in New York City, and they'll face the Denver Broncos. So huge games were played, and we now know the victors. And uh, let's discuss, man. These were all-time epic games. Let's start with the New England Patriots at Denver Broncos. Peyton Manning pulled it off, man. He came through. Yeah, he really did. He's, he pretty much played a flawless game, in my opinion. Um, there wasn't too many throws that he missed. He had 32 completions, um, two touchdowns, 400 yards. That's that's coming up huge. Solid. Uh, we knew that he probably was going to have a good game, but I don't think any of us thought he was going to be this dominant. Um, they really didn't have trouble moving the ball the whole game. Uh, he wasn't really getting pressured, wasn't sacked at all, really wasn't getting hit very much. He was getting rid of the ball, and uh, he, he really showed up today. Yep, yep, of course, that's Kyle. I'm RJ here with Trippy Commentaries. Yeah, I had called it coming into the game. I felt like the Denver offense was definitely built to handle this New England defense. Early on, I don't know about you, I was really impressed with the rookie linebacker, Jamie Collins, there for the New England Patriots. He was all yeah. over the place, yeah. and I felt that he might make it difficult for the Broncos. Obviously, they, they were not able to run it as effective as they did in that game prior in the season, you know, where they had lost, although they ran all over him. Um, but it came down to Peyton Manning. He was able to spread the ball. That said, it started off pretty slow. Yeah, well, more more than just Peyton Manning, the other side of the ball, Tom Brady couldn't do anything. Uh, Denver's, Denver's defense really showed up for this game. Denver's defense was about as dominant as Peyton Manning was on offense. Um, they really controlled things. I mean, you know, they only scored three points in the first three quarters of the game. You know, coming down, try, they had to try to make a comeback at the end, which they attempted, and they got close. But to me, Denver's defense really stepped up, and, and they they showed everybody that, hey, we are legit defense. You know, they get Champ Bailey back. That is huge right now. Cromartie had a huge game. Yeah, we got to shout out Dominic Rogers. Cromartie came through and was the obvious number one cornerback for that team. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, the, the, defense, the defense showed up great. The offense showed up great. I mean... This Denver Broncos team, they, you know, this solidifies them. If there was any doubters before, you cannot honestly say now and look at this team and be like, all right, this is not the best team in the AFC because they are. I mean, hands down, mm -hmm. they're the number one team in the AFC. So it worked out. It worked out in the AFC. Yeah, even the hardcore Pat fans there in Boston, you know, they have to say that the Broncos are clearly the best team. I know a lot of people were picking the Patriots coming into the game, but the Broncos had their way. And one thing that was, was blatant in this game was, you know, Peyton Manning had a whole force of offensive weapons yep. at his dis, you know ex, at his exposure there. And on the other uh, side there, Tom Brady's guys were really struggling to get open and make those big plays. And, you know, I, Edelman did end up with a pretty good game, but we got to call out Tom Brady for missing guys wide open and leaving big plays on the field. Could have totally changed this game early in the game. Tom Brady has an Edelman running wide open downfield, and he overthrows him. Probably would have scored a touchdown. They would have won up 7-3. Yep. You have to, in these big games, you have to hit those passes. Yeah, which is crazy because when we think of Tom Brady, we think of hell. That guy's going to make that big pass. Yep. You're not going to see him leave that on the field too often, but in this one he did. So. Well, did Amon Dole even play today? Because yeah. I don't think I saw him one time make a catch on the field. I mean, Yeah, I was watching him quite a bit, and he just was never open. The guy could not get space. Nope. And the one time he was open, it was just another pass that Brady missed. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. With Champ Bailey back, Denver, Denver's defense now is they're, they're complete. Because before, I mean, their, their run defense has always been good. I think they finished seventh uh, you know, in total rushing on their defense. I mean, they... They were always good on defense with stopping the run, but their pass, you know, their secondary was a little bit shaky because guys were getting injured. Yeah, including now, Champ Bailey. Now they get Champ Bailey back. Now it's all of a sudden, okay, now the secondary is playing solid. You got your linebackers playing solid. Mm -hmm. You know, your defensive line is creating pressure. Um, big shout-out to Big Boy today. 
Knighton. Uh, yeah, Terrence Knighton had Terrence a huge Knighton game. He was an unstoppable he was, force. He was driving through uh, New England's offensive line the whole game. Had a huge sack on Brady at mm-hmm. the end of the game there. I mean, huge yep. game. Their defense was looking solid, and this is this is coming into the perfect matchup to me for the Super Bowl right yep. now. Yeah, absolutely. Robert Ayers came through with a huge sack, which is not easy to do on Tom Brady and that offensive line, including Logan Mankins. But um, one thing I wanted to mention is, obviously, you had Denver's defense without Chris Harris, you know, one of their young stud cornerbacks that had really shown up this year. And Champ Bailey really did a great job stepping into that role yep. and coming up big because, it, you know, hands down, we got to give major props to the Denver Bronco defense. They really impressed us this game. And, and then, like you said, that's going to be big in this next matchup. Move it ahead in, uh, you know, going against Seattle in the New York uh, Stadium there, over in New Jersey, actually. Now, um, one thing uh, we got to mention here is, uh, or at least I want to mention, is towards the beginning of the game, I really felt like Shane Vereen looked like he was pretty fired up. He made a couple plays in the passing game, of course, Mm -hmm. and I just felt like they never got him going. You know what I'm saying? It's like you got to use this guy. This is a good matchup for him to to actually catch some balls and even hand it to him because he could probably run it a little bit. I felt like they they didn't use him enough in this game. Yeah, I mean, he had, I think he had like um, like 90 total yards. He did have a lot of four catches, 34 yards. Yeah, and 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 he had a good average. Every time he's touching the ball, he was getting good plays. So it's like, why yep. are they not using them? I mean, eight and a half, eight and a half, you know, yards per carry, mm-hmm. uh, 11, 11.8 yards per catch. Why are you not getting him the ball more? I mean, he had he had nine touches on the day. Why is he not having 20, 25 touches? You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep exactly. Another thing that we have to point out is I, I, I had a feeling that Wes Welker, the old Patriot, would come back to haunt them in this game. Now, didn't do so much on the you know the statistics. He had his catches. I think he had 34 yards receiving. You know, he helped out here and there, made some big catches. But the one thing he did was he completely knocked out the Patriots' number one cornerback, Keeb to leave. Yeah, he he like hurt his ribs or something, so that knocked him out. And hey, he came back to haunt him. And, Maybe not the way we expected, but and what and what that did is that paved the way for Demarius Thomas to come through and have yep. a beast game. They could not stop Demarius Thomas. The other mm-hmm. you know cornerback that was trying to cover him had no chance in hell of stopping Demarius Thomas. He had yep. his way with him, and Peyton Manning was so on point to him. I and it takes it is very hard to make thirty two completions in a game. That's you know that's that's hitting your mark almost every single mm-hmm. pass. And uh, him and Damaris Thomas just look unbeatable right now, and it's just going to be a great matchup to see him against Sherman. Oh, God. His defense. Jeez, the Legion of Boom, I cannot imagine. That is definitely going to be an epic Super Bowl we have to come to here. But uh, major props go out to the man, Peyton Manning, soon to be named MVP. Terminator. Um, yep, and as you said, Demarius Thomas, he had seven catches, 134 yards with a touchdown. And Peyton Manning was really able to spread it to all of his guys. He came through. Now, they did have to get, you know, they settled for a lot of field goals in this game, but it did turn out to be enough. Sometimes, you know, you do got to get those field goals. Sometimes you got to realize that, hey, we're not going to score touchdowns every time against the Patriots. Belichick knows what he, do, you know, what he's doing. Yep. Those field goals help towards the win. They, you know, the 26-16, to 16, you won by 10 points. So those field goals you settled for were the difference. So congratulations to the Denver Broncos. Very, very proud and happy for Peyton Manning. He's got his chance for a second Super Bowl title. Obviously, I know you're you were pretty uh, you were on his case a little bit, and I know you re- would really like to uh, have him win a second Super Bowl before you can totally, you know, put him as the number one quarterback. I think I think you're kind of right on that. He'll probably need one more Super Bowl to really uh, put himself over the edge. Well, yeah. What I was saying is that I mean. Peyton Manning already was above Brady uh, for me all time, mm-hmm. um, just because of you know pure skill and just one a kind one of a kind quarterback. You yeah. know, um, obviously Brady's got all the wins, he's got the rings, but you know two different situations, two totally different teams. I don't mm-hmm. really look at that too much. But if 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 Tom Brady would have went into Peyton Manning's home and beat him and got to the Super Bowl, then it's like, well, damn, maybe because maybe Brady does deserve to go ahead of him. So. Big win for Peyton Manning. He had to win. Mm-hmm. This shuts all the critics up. You just by him going to the Super Bowl alone is, you know, it, it's it's good enough for me. Yeah, and looking ahead for these uh, for the Patriots, I gotta say they're my early favorite favorites for next season. 
because they're probably going to get Gronk back in some capacity. It might not even be for like the last, you know, the very tail end of the season. They might try to pull a Percy Harvin with him and just save him for when he counts. But you know they're going to find more weapons to add with Tom Brady. They're going to, I, it sounds like they're going to bring back LeGarrette Blunt, you know, which might, that might be questionable. But hey, you never know. We'll see what happens there. I, I see Shane Vereen becoming a, a much bigger yeah. part of this offense. I, I think they're... They're just mm -hmm. waiting to use him when when he's getting you know at that level. I think he's having trouble picking up you know the blitz package and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which he's going to learn. Uh, but yeah, I see him having a, a much better year this year. Yeah, and another guy I'm going to be very high on going through the off season and into next season is their linebacker Jamie Collins. I really like him quite a bit. I feel like he's going to be that Belichick guy that he's going to mold and make him you know a great player for years to come. The guy was actually a quarterback who uh, had to turn into a defensive back, who mm -hmm. then turned into a defensive lineman, was drafted in the first round by the Patriots, and uh, was transferred into a linebacker, and now look at him, he's making plays. So you got to give him credit. Next season, you'll have Gerard Mayo coming back, and you know that's going to make them very strong. Well, and Hightower as well. Hightower is... Yeah. You know, is, is Doing really well at seven tackles today. Yeah, all of a sudden they're going to have a really good linebacker crew with the combination of Chandler Jones, you know, top-notch kicker. And, as I said, they really need to bring in that one extra guy for Tom Brady because he's. you can tell he's still got some big plays in him. I don't think we're doubting he'll probably make another run at the Super Bowl. We'll probably see him in another AFC championship, especially teamed up with the mastermind Bill Belichick. Yep. But... Uh, so that's why I'll, I'll say, as of right now, they're my early favorites for the Super Bowl going in, you know, looking ahead to next season. But right now, they're done gotta. Yeah. Tom, or, uh, Tom Brady's been knocked out by Peyton Manning, who gets the one up on him this time. He has the bragging rights, and he will move on to New York to face the Seattle Seahawks. So, uh, well, I guess uh, that's going to be an interesting game. We're going to have number one offense going against a number one style defense. We'll go ahead and talk about the San Francisco 49er versus Seattle Seahawks slobber knocker in part two. So stay tuned. And thank you guys for joining us here at Trippy Commentaries. Peace.